So therefore tell yourself, my new has come. Say your name, okay. Your new has come. Hallelujah. Your new has come. I, you know, I, I, lest I forget, you know, when I was talking to the Lord about the service, he said that he was going to speak to people today. So be attentive. The Lord will speak to you. Those of you listening over the air today and whenever you do listen to it, the Lord purposes to speak to his people today. Amen. You will hear his voice, he said today. Praise the Lord. So we start, so it starts in this 16 to 17 where the Lord, it, the, 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 the prophet Isaiah was saying, Thus says the Lord, who makes a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters? brings forth the chariots and the horse. Essentially, the Lord was talking to them about what he did. He was reminding the people of the time of his mighty words. And so it's important that for our encouragement, for our faith, for our hope, that we need to remember, be aware of the victories and the deliverances the Lord wrought for you in the past. Because God is still victorious. God is still the deliverer. At the time, God delivered. He was talking about how he used the Red Sea. He used the Red Sea as a soul. He showed forth his power in the Red Sea. It was a, a roadway. It was a new way. It was a safe way. It was a refuge for them to run into. Israel that was leaving the, the place of bondage, the Red Sea, at the time that the Lord is talking about here, the Red Sea was a new way, it was a safe way. It was a refuge. And the water was a wall of fire, a, sorry, a wall of protection for them. However, that same Red Sea, that same Red Sea was a grave for the enemies. When the, the, so, so the Lord wants us to understand that he is victorious in your life. Amen. He is your deliverer. Amen. And while he's, be, he's showing forth his victory for you, he's bringing deliverance for you, Amen. he is also bringing judgment on the enemies of your soul. Amen. Your new has come. You need to remember Let's look at Psalm 136. And we will look at verses 13 to 15. Psalm 136. And if you have your mic. Psalm 136, verse 13 to 15. It would be good if we can kind of stay in one place. And not be walking up and down. Psalm 136, 13 to 16. To him who divided the Red Sea into, but his mercy endures forever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. And made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. Thank you. If the whole of Psalm 136 is a prayer in itself, the whole of Psalm 136 is a recollection of God's mercy. So God's deliverance, God's victory because of his mercy. And here the psalmist is recollecting the mercy God showed Israel. Mercy God showed his people. He showed them mercy in dividing the Red Sea. He showed them mercy in causing them to walk through the midst of it. He showed them mercy in causing Pharaoh and his army to be overthrown in the midst of it. And therefore, God's victories and God's deliverances in your life is his act of mercy. And so we are to thank God 
for his previous deliverances, his previous victories in your life, his previous deliverances because of mercy, his previous deliverances because of his mercy, even when you didn't know him. Many of us can tell of what God did for us before we even called upon the name of Jesus. We, we, we are to thank God for his mercy that we did, that caused us not to die in our sin. It is his mercy that we were saved. Let us rise and thank God. Right, but rise and begin to thank God for his, his active deliverance in your life. Think back to his, his, his victories. Think back to the things he saved you from. Think, think back to the deliverance. Even when you didn't call upon his name, he showed you mercy. Father, we come to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Father, for delivering us, Lord, even before we called upon your name. Thank you for the near misses you protected us from. Thank you for the dangers on the way you protected us from. Father, I remember when I was on a journey, Lord. And my car, the tire burst, and I went into the bush. Lord, you saved me. Father, Lord, I thank you. Father, thank you for your mercy. For those that have, have given birth to children, they didn't die in childbirth, childbirth. We thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord, that the plans of the enemy, did not, you did not allow it to prevail in our life because of your mercy. Father, we come to say thank you. Lord, we appreciate your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't allow us to die in our sin. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we do not take your mercy and your grace for granted in our lives. Father, we thank you that you are intentional about each and every one of us. Father, Lord, you're intentional in the lives of our children because we call upon you no matter how small, Lord, your mercy prevails. Lord, we say thank you. The scripture said that your mercy endures forever. We thank you for your enduring mercy. Oh, your mercy implies, Lord, that judgment would have been the consequence. Father, we say thank you. Thank you that the enemy did not rejoice over us. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' name, please be seated. And so, we then go on to verse, verse 18 of Isaiah 43, which appears to be a contradiction. It says, do not call to mind the former thing. We have just seen in verses 16 and 17, the Lord was talking to him, was telling, the, telling them about the victories and the deliverances he had wrought for them. And now the Lord is saying, do not call to mind the former thing. You know what the Lord is saying here? Before we even go to that, tell your neighbor. Oh, let me explain. Yes, then we know that what we're saying. Yes, you know, we are to remember the past with respect to God's victories and God's deliverances. Mm -hmm. But we're not to remember the discouragement and the failures of the past. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the failures and the discouragements of the past blur our vision yes. in God's ability for you today and yes. tomorrow. Yes. Because the lies of the enemy prevail in the failures of the past. Many a time it is ignorance. Many a time it is the doors that, that, that we opened that enabled the entrance of the serpent to bite. Therefore tell your neighbor on, the right, on, your, on your right, do not call to mind the former things. Some versions say do not remember the former things. Whatever your version says, tell your neighbor on your right, do not remember the do former not, things. Do not remember the former things. Tell your neighbor on the left, do not, rem uh, the, do not remember the former things. Do not remember the former things. Tell yourself, call your name, do not remember the former things. Those things that, that depict failure, 
Those things that depict defeat. Those things that depict discouragement. You know, I was talking to one of my children the other day and I was telling them, look at yourself. Why? Thank God for where you are. Thank God that you made this statement. Yes. You heard it. You said so you heard something and you just, you know, moved on. Had it been before, it would have now been, this is what you did. Oh, this is what you didn't do when I was six, when I was seven, when I was... Do not remember the former, former things. things. Yeah, yeah. These are strongholds that cause people to go round and round in circles without going forward. And the Lord is saying, do not call to mind the former things. Let's look at Genesis chapter 29. Sorry, Genesis 19, verse 26. We want to look at Lot's wife. Lot's wife made a choice to remember the former things. Let's look at Genesis chapter 19. We say verse 26. Verse 26. Uh, but his wife looks back behind him and she became a pillar of salt so for those who don't know the story let's probably read a little bit um sweet holy spirit we said we're looking at genesis 19. genesis 19. so let's start from let's let's start from 16. Let's see. Oh, let's, oh gosh, this is a long story. What, how much time do we have? Mm, mm, mm. Sweet Holy Spirit. Okay, let's look at, oh, Shaka. Let's look at 23. Just read from 23 to 26. Verse 23. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Thank you. Can you read verse 17, please? Verse 17 of chapter 19. So it came to pass, when they had brought them outside, that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Thank you. So we see in this, the, the, the story is about the fact that a people had become so perverse, so perverse that the Lord had decided to destroy the city. Mm. And so the city in question was Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord sent his angels, came down to Bring, to destroy the land, but to bring out Lot. Because Abraham, had his, his, his uncle, Abraham, had interceded at the time. The angels brought them out. And he plead, Lot had pleaded that they wouldn't be able to go as far as they want to. They want them to. Can they go to a certain place? So we saw that they now entered into Zohar. They were now in the new, as it were. And the Lord had instructed them not to look back. You know, when the Lord is taking you somewhere out of a place of bondage, where the Lord is taking you into something new because of a past, past experience that has been negative, the Lord does not expect, the Lord may give you some specific instructions necessary for the new. And in this situation, the instruction was not to look back. Some may have been delivered from pornography. The instruction is, don't look back. Mm, mm. And the eye gate was the entry point for the old. And in this case, the eye, she disobeyed the instruction and looked back. Yes. And didn't make it in the new. Mm. She was already in the new. We saw... In verse 23, the sun had risen over the earth when Lot came to Zohar. This was the place where they had asked the Lord, can we just reach here before you start? 
If they had now reached there and then the Lord began to do what he said he would do. Mm -hmm. And she looked back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How faithful are we to the instructions of God in the new? Mm -hmm. We are now in our new. The Lord says your new it has come. Therefore, the Lord is going to be speaking to some of us. If he's not spoken to you already. And the instruction is for your good. Here the instruction was not to look back. The eye gate was the entry point for the old. And she became a pillar of salt. We're not to behold negativity. Because negativity brings bondage. The things behind negativity... They, they, they instill fear. They instill discouragement. They instill lethargy. They instill all those things that are contrary to the qualities that God expects of us. He expects diligence. He expects fervency. Yes. But anything that you behold that takes that away that will not allow you to prosper in the new. Declare that your eyes will not fail you. My eyes will not fail me. In this new season. In Jesus' name. The next thing we want to look at is not just that we are not to, we, we, we are not to look back. We should not go back. You know, when the Lord is saying you're in the new, he expects you to, to, to build your tent in the new. Find and experience what he wants of you in the new. Not to go back to the old. So it's not just the looking. It's also not actively carrying your leg and your body back into the old. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. Those of us that were praying on Friday, we, we touched on this when we were praying. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. And let's see, let, let's see where we'll read, so it will make sense. So, and before you read, let me see the length of the places we'll read to, to, to get the gist of what uh, right let's we probably let's probably read from 17 from 17 to 22 please TB to T 17 to 22 these are wells without water, clouds carried by a temp tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, than having known it to turn from the holy commandment to live it to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a soul having washed to her swallowing in the mirror. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So we're seeing here that it started off by, in simple terms, those that have received, encountered Jesus, have made a decision to walk with Jesus, Amen. have made a decision to say, Lord, I've walked away, I've turned my back on my old way of life. I choose to walk with you. And having made that confession, they encounter some so-called saints, some so-called ministers of the of, of, of the truth who uh, who begin it says in verse 18 speaking out arrogant words of vanity they entice by fleshly desires by sensuality those who barely escape from the ones who live in error 
So those, they feed on the desires of the flesh. Those, you see, the sensual things are the, the, the things that appeal to our five senses. Yes. Those that build conjure images in the mind. You know, once upon a time, you know, there was, uh, there was a, there was a, so supposed to be a minister that you know, if you're in their congregation, you get certain amounts of money. They'll just be giving you free money, and people were flocking to that congregation. But there was error going on because things that are happening in the midst, immoral things were going on. But there had been a, there was an appeal to the sensual. There was an appeal to the, as it says. To, to, to vanity, to flesh. Those are the enticed by fleshly desires. I'm reading the New American Standard. And by sensuality, those who barely escape from the ones who live in it. So they have barely escaped the world. They, people, it would have been young believers, those that were probably still drinking milk, even some that were seasoned. But the sensual, the, the desires of the world were still prominent in their lives. And, they say, and the scripture goes on to say that they were so promising them freedom while they themselves are slaves of corruption. So those that were enticing them were all were bound. And you know, many a time, we are not to despise the discernment of the Holy Spirit. You know, there'll be sometimes, you know, my, 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 my husband will come back and say, you know, he suddenly saw something, you know, you, you know, someone says that they call themselves, you know, a saint, but you see a certain display of character, then, you know, it dampens the spirit. And we are to, we, we are to, to hold tight to the triggers of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So no, not so, to no, not to be enslaved. It says here, Promising them freedom, why they themselves are slaves of corruption. So those that were making the promises were themselves enslaved. Mm -hmm. By corruption. And it goes on to say, for and, and then when you when when one is enslaved to corruption and one is still in the sensual, you become ensnared. And it then says, For by what a man is overcome, by this he is enslaved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if it is the appeal, so that one there was an appeal that you get, they'll give you money. Yes. And if you remember then, you'll be getting free money if you qualify, you know, whatever. Then, if you're overcome by the desire for money, you're bound to it. Yes. And you know, the, the scripture doesn't talk, tell us to be bound money. to money. Money is supposed to be a servant to us. Yes. It answers all things. It will answer all things. Money will answer all things for you as you have control over it, not it having dominion over you. We don't run after it all our life. We're, you know, I hear stories of people that work on all godly hours and then you wonder where is the time to enjoy that money that one is sweating and bending over for. He says, he therefore says, for if after they have escaped the defilements of the world, so these ones that would have escaped the world by saying, Jesus, I have made you my Lord and Savior. And it says, by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled. So if you've escaped and you're again entangled, it says, they're entangled in them and are overcome. So not just entangled, but overcome, you then fall. Not just entangle yourself, not just carry yourself, but you then fall. So you're not just, you've been delivered from alcohol, that you just go somewhere and they offer you a drink and you say, let you drink, and you then go back to that state of stupor. It says, the last state has become worse for them than the first. And if you think of Lot's wife, she had entered the new. She looked back. The last state for her was worse. She died. Wow. She didn't even get to enjoy the new. Because she became a pillar of salt. There was no reversal of that state. And so what are we saying? So with Lot's wife, the eye gate was the open the door for the old. 
In this case, it is one using one's whole life to open the door. You actively carry yourself into a situation. You carry yourself from the new in back into the old. And how does one expect to be remedied? Remember the scripture said that where the demons are cast out and they, 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 they say, let's go back to our, our former house and check it out and see how it is. If they come back and found it swept clean, nothing in it. The Bible says that they'll come back with more demons such that the state of that one is worse than it was. What am I trying to say? That when the Lord brings us in the new, we are to do the necessary in the new. We are to embrace the new and begin to align and adjust our perspective, our thoughts, our relationship, our walk with the new. Therefore, there, that is why the law said there is, no, there, 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 there is no relationship between light and darkness. He said he wants us to be hot or cold. The Lord is important. The Lord is interested in absolutes. There's no in-between with him. We, he said you're either hot or cold. You can't be lukewarm. If you're lukewarm, he will spit you out. And therefore, if you are lukewarm in your perception, if you're one that can't stand, the scripture says it's white and you're saying it's a big gray. That is, the, that is not the new. That is wanting to have one leg in and one leg out. The state, if, as that continues, the enemy, you be, the enemy begins to find uh, you know, um, reason, find, find, find that, that individual as a suitable substrate for their ideology. Mm. Because there will be more and more things they will add to that lukewarm, that in-between um, ideology. And before you know it, error has set in. And so, we are talking about, the Lord is saying, in that Isaiah 43, verse, uh, verse 18, He says, do not call to mind the former things. Do not call to mind the former things. We are not to let our eyes be the, 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 the gateway to the old. We're not to allow our whole self to be a gateway to the old. It then goes on to say, let's even respond to that last week. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. my life, life. Will, not will not go backwards. But Lord, as you said I'm in the new, I embrace the new. I shut the door against the old. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Verse 18 goes on to say, or ponder. So he says, do not call to mind the former things. Or ponder things of the past. Ponder. The act of pondering is the act of, of meditation. You meditate on something. Or I, I looked at the, the Random House Kemmerman Kem Webster's College Dictionary. And it also says it's to consider something deeply and thoroughly. You know, when the Lord says, do not ponder the things of all, the former things, sorry, the things of the past, don't begin to meditate on it. Don't begin to thoroughly you know, dissect and reflect on the things of the past that were discouraging, that brought defeat, that brought in the, 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 the darkness and the failures and everything that doesn't look like Jesus in your life. We are not to meditate on the past. Because that's where depression comes in. That is when all those negative thoughts come in. That gives the enemy a foothold in our life. Because when we ponder, the Lord told us what to meditate on. What did he tell us to meditate on? He told us to meditate on his words. What did he say in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? He said that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. 
But you should meditate upon it day and night. We are to meditate upon the word. And purpose to do what's in it. Because as we do what's in it, then we have good success. We're not to meditate on the past. The past that is negative. The past that has no correlation with the new. The past that has nothing. Nothing. That lines up with God's word and God's truth. Do not, or ponder, do not ponder the things of the past. Don't meditate on the things of the past. It's not something you sit and then someone sees you. Oh, oh, do you know? That brother, that sister, the thing they did me last year. The thing they did me, you know, five, you know, when I was young, you know, this thing they did to me. You see that mark it came from? No, no, no. As you're meditating and pondering the things of the past, you will not move forward. You will not be present in the new. And before you, the new will pass you by without you even experiencing what the new has. Please be seated. Do not ponder the past, the things of old. I want us to look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Because it articulates there what the law will have us to set our mind on. I love this scripture. Philippians 4, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report, or of good report. If there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And so this is what the Lord wants you and I to meditate on. Anything that is truthful. Meditate on that. Don't meditate on the lies of the enemy. Anything that is honorable, anything that is noble, meditate on that. Anything that is right. So if it is not right, if it's not just, don't meditate on it. Don't dwell on it. If it is not pure, if it's immoral, don't meditate on it. Because there are spirits behind these things. Remember, the scripture tells us that the, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. All these things that do not look like Jesus, that do not look like his word, are strongholds. Mm. They form strongholds. Amen. And strongholds are rooted lies. Rooted, rooted attributes of darkness. And so if it's not true, it's not honorable, it's not right, it's not pure. It's not lovely. If it's not of good reports, so if it brings disrepute, you know, those of us that work in government or government is um, bodies, you work as not to bring the organization into disrepute. And, and that should be what you even do for yourself. You know, you're running your own business. You're running as not to bring yourself into disrepute because that is the integrity. The integrity of, an, of, 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 of your business or your organization is that it do not, it, you know, it is honorable. It is of a good report. You know, it, it, there, there's a body called the Clinical, um, the Care Quality Commission. Its job is to inspect certain health bodies. And th they can either have a, a, good, uh, a good outcome, um, requires improvements, um, inadequate, and there's a fourth one, it escapes me. But when it's inadequate, sorry? When it's inadequate, we then, there's, there's, they now need to put together action plans to remedy all the things in the organization that do not enable it to function well. And so how much more we, thinking about things, we should think about things that are of good report. Essentially, we give God glory. 
And we should meditate on things that are excellent, that are virtuous, and that are praiseworthy. Everything you want to meditate on is something that, that, that you know, when, when someone says a penny for your thoughts, and you say it, it will give God praise. You're not thinking on something that, you know, when someone hears it, you will bow your head in shame. Let's rise and declare. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare, my new has come. I meditate upon things that are true, that are honorable, that are right, that are pure, that are lovely, that are of good report, that are excellent, and that are praiseworthy. I set my mind on these things. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. And verse 19 of, um, of Isaiah 43 then goes on to say, Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make roadways in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. What the Lord wants us to know, what we're seeing here, that unlike when God made dry land, in the midst of waters. He's saying here that he's going to make waters in the midst of dry land. Essentially, what the Lord wants you to know is that his ways are past finding out. His strategies are not, are not necessarily replicable. The ABC of, of getting to point X in life may be one way for someone else, and it may be another way for another person. You can't, if you're walking with God by the Spirit, you will not say the formula he used for Mr. A is the formula he will use for your life. You cannot put God in a box. All he wants you to know is that you are in the new. And he also is to sit at his feet and understand how the new for you is going to pan out. It is not to look to X, Y, Z and say, right, okay, I see how they're alive, what they're doing. Let's key into what they're doing. No, no, no. God's ways are past finding out. Then he made a road where he then, then he made a road in the water. Now he said he's gonna bring water on the land. Where it's dry, where you would not necessarily see water. Then you couldn't see dry land in the middle of a sea, but he did it. And he's gonna do the opposite now. And therefore, all you want to hold on to is him and his word and his power and his glory. He then goes on to say, Shall you not know it? Shall you not know it? We are people of the Spirit. And if you are in the Spirit, you know that we are in a new season. We enter July knowing that we are on the second leg of the journey. You know, a, a, a fresh baton has been passed on to us. And it's a baton of the new. You know, I was now looking at my notes and I saw that actually, because I'm aware the Lord will say, get, drop this topic in my mind. I'll say, Lord, I'm reading this and it's like I've read this before and I've heard you say something before. And then I looked, the message we had on, on the 3rd of July was entering and embracing the new. And today the Lord is telling us, your new has come. So there's something new. And the Lord is saying, you know, let's look at 1 Corinthians. Verses 9 to 10. We are spirit beings, and then the Lord is saying, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 10. The Lord was saying that, will you not be aware of it? Shall you not know it? Some versions were saying. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into Mother, the heart of him. man the things that which God has prepared for those who love him. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Verse 10. Yes. But God has revealed them to us Mighty through God. his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep, deep things, things of God. Thank you. So the law by his spirit is revealing to you and I the fact that the new has come. And remember, it was the eye gate that was the 
and she points into the old for Lot's wife. And the Lord is telling you and I, as spirit beings, that eye has not seen, nor has ear heard. So the eye gates sometimes cannot perceive, cannot, cannot actually see. And because we do not see, we, do, we go into error and try to go backwards, to think that the backwards can inform their head. And the, in the Lord is saying, as the eye has not seen, nor ear heard. So the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, the heart has not perceived. And therefore, the ear and the heart are part of that body that can also carry us back to the back, back backwards. But the Lord is wanting you and I to understand that by the Spirit, there is something going on in this season and this time. I want you to rise. You want to ask the Lord to open your eyes. Open your eyes to see. Father God, Father God, open the eyes of my spirit to see what you're, you're doing. Open my physical eyes to see what you're doing. Father, sensitize my ears to hear your voice in dreams and visions as I walk along the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, impress up, impress upon my heart to perceive the magnitude of all you have for me. Father, I am in awe. I am grateful. I am excitedly expectant. Begin to tell the Lord, Batasheke, by the Spirit, that your eyes, you need your eyes to see. Because your eyes will not go backwards, but because you're in the Spirit. And because by the Spirit we perceive. Tell the Lord that by the Spirit you need to see. You want to see. By the Spirit you want to hear. By the Spirit you want to be sensitive to your hearts receiving that which is the, the that which He has for you in this youth. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let eyes see. Father, let the eyes of your people see. Father, let their ears hear. Let their hearts perceive. That which is your doing in this new season. That which you have released in this new season. That which you have them walk to, walk into in this new season. In the name of Jesus. You know the Lord is saved. That the new has come. It has come not just that the new has come. The new has come in destiny. The new has come in your business. The new has come in your career. The new has come in your marriage. The new has come in your health. The new has come in the work of your hands. The new has come in establishments and in, 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 in settlements. And yours is a begin to tell the Lord. To begin to thank him. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 17. That in the in that, 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 oh, what is it? Sweet Holy Spirit. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. That all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Therefore, and in Christ in this new season, in Christ Jesus in this new season, the old, the heart of the old season has gone. And all things have become new. The behaviors in the old season are now new behaviors. The thoughts in the old season season are now new thoughts begin to thank the lord because it is not by power it is not by might it is by his spirit we saw that in his mercy he caused pharaoh and his army to be consumed in the red sea to be overthrown in the red sea and in his mercy he has said your new has come begin to thank him for those areas where the new the needs to come in your life begin to thank him Father, that all things are aligning. Thank you that helpers are aligning. Thank you that...
resources are aligning. Thank you that opportunities are aligning. Begin to thank the Lord because renew needs the spirits to move. Just as the spirit hovered over the waters, the Lord is aligning. Open your mouth and thank the Lord for the things that are aligning to enable the new to be made manifest in your life. Father, thank you for divine alignment. Thank you for divine alignment. Alignment of helpers. Alignment of circumstances. Alignment of opportunities. Alignment, Lord, Shabroko to Sebebe. Rebe Satata Tamakondo. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you for the opportunities that are aligning. Father, for the people that are aligning. Father, we thank you, Lord, Shabroko to Toto. Let's rejoice and thank the Lord for his goodness. Hallelujah. 